uh, ask uh, make a motion to uh, would like to make a motion to adopt the agenda i move ron okay i will second, second. tom all right then this uh all in favor aye 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 okay okay the agenda is adopted uh number two Public comment on non-agenda items. Speakers are asked to limit their comments to three minutes. And only on non-agenda items within the matter jurisdiction of the commission. Commission may not take action on. Consider debate items not on the agenda except under narrow circumstances. Meeting statutory tests. Response to comments on non-agenda items will be limited to factual information or clarifying questions from staff or commission. The chair may refer to the matter to staff or to a future meeting agenda. We have it. Do we have any public comment on non-agenda items? You do not. You can move on, Steve. All right. Let's move on to commissioner items of interest. Uh, from last time, we had no commissioner items of interest. Um, I had an item on, sorry, did you see no items? Yes. I think I have an item on there um, regarding the impact of drought, although I read the report from the fire chief and there's a pretty thorough answer there. So I'm happy with the report as, as a response. Okay. Everybody else that has uh, items of interest? No. No comment. Steve, right. no comment. Okay. Um, let's move on to. Oh. Is there a public comment on this one? Or? No, not on this. All right. So let's move on to number four draft minutes of April 6th. 2021 fire commission meeting. Uh, can I get uh, a motion to uh, approve that? Or Ron moves approval of the minutes. Tom will second it. Okay. All in favor? All right. Any, All right. Any, you got a call for comment, right. Steve. Oh, okay. Is there any comments on the uh, draft minutes of April 6, 2021? No comments. You can go on. No. Okay. Yeah. So then it was unanimously approved. All approved. Yes, all approved. Okay. Uh, let's move on to number five, Chief Officer Report and Activity Summary. Go ahead, Chief. It's all yours. Good evening, uh, Fire Commissioners. I apologize for being a couple minutes late uh, signing in. I actually have a couple of clocks and I was looking at the clock with the worst time on it because uh, we had lost some power and basically I was relying on the wrong clock. So I'm going to default <laughs> back to my old reliable watch next time. Um, that being said, it's a pleasure to be here with you this evening. And I got a few items of interest I, I'd like to share and discuss. Um, first and foremost, regarding the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority and the, <clears throat> the efforts that are underway currently to try to start uh, timing our efforts in advance of the new fiscal year, but also in recognition that our winter drought conditions have now led to drier fuels and the need to really hasten our efforts when it comes to different projects and or activities such as gold grazing, as an example, where my understanding is the fuels may actually dry out to a degree that the goats don't even find the the grass to be palatable. So that's one of the concerns we have. So we're trying to move forward. And this is a recent development that I've been in conversation with staff um, prior to developing this uh, particular update for tonight. But just want you to be aware that, you know, staff is looking at options and looking to exercise options sooner than later to ensure that we're um, being as proactive as we can, given the fact that uh, April was a very dry month. Our winter months and or spring have uh, all been consistently dry and we anticipate uh, maybe some of the worst conditions we've seen in the last few years uh, this year. So with that, um, I just want to advise that uh, in an effort to be very proactive, we've uh, hired additional defensive space inspectors and those staff are 
uh, receiving training and uh, just this past week have been out conducting inspections. And so um, while they're initially starting their efforts in the San Rafael area, we do have staff that are committed to actually getting out and beginning some of their effort here in the very near future to uh, the Marinwood areas to ensure that the, the uh, assessments and inspections are taking place and that's getting underway. Um, Chipper Days, as an example, with Fire Safe Marin, they've targeted May 18th as the launch of their program, which was uh, a very good target set by Rich Shortall and, and friends over there. And I really commend them for getting an early start, given the fact that folks are taking a very proactive stance right now and launching uh, their efforts to become in compliance earlier uh, this year than maybe in times past. And that's very helpful because as you're able to, to chip and get more of the fuel array, you can understand the, the, um, the equivalent safety that you may be able to achieve by getting fuels away uh, sooner than we had been in the past. Uh, I think I spoke in the last meeting about the expanded rollout of chipper days as well. And they're gonna have a couple of phases. One starts in May and I believe the next one will begin in August. And so we're covering early and we're covering later in the area to make sure those neighborhoods have access on more than just one occasion to the chipping services that'll be made available. Um, Marin, uh, excuse me, AmeriCorps teams, uh, we're looking to try to push them hopefully sometime in June. There are some dynamics right now that have uh, slowed their availability and it's generally on their end, but there's also some logistical things we have to work out on our end, such as housing those crews. But we're still looking at the, the value and the importance of bringing them in to assist with uh, some of our um, our handheld projects, if you will, and just the idea that, that those crews are well-trained and seasoned and experienced in most cases with utilizing loppers and chainsaws and other things that will really make a difference in a relatively short period of time. Uh, and part of the projects we've submitted uh, involve goat grazing once again. It involves um, work on our open space and some of our fire road vegetation removal as we've looked to uh, ensure that we're continuing that important work to draw down risk. And so uh, one of the things we're really looking to try to get um, pushing forward is, is the potential establishment of a direct assistance grant program. And this is gonna take a little more work as we recognize, but it's, it's certainly an important aspect of what we're trying to accomplish moving forward to provide meaningful assistance to as many people as we possibly can. Uh, right now, the numbers may range somewhere between 500 and $1,000 per request. Uh, we haven't solidified that yet, but we're trying to make sure we're in alignment with what the other agencies within the county are doing, and also make sure that given the money that we have available to us, we're able to uh, help as many people as we're able to and spread the, the, um, the resources appropriately. And so um, moving on towards the planning and program manager, uh, Ann Creelock has been hired to assist with the MWPA and will begin sometime this month. I didn't get an exact date. But we also had the uh, ability to interact with an individual named Sabrina Teller, who's serving, serving as the legal counsel for the MWPA. And she provided us with some very important assistance on how to ensure that our language uh, across the agencies and countywide are aligned when we, it comes to our proposal and project submissions. And so um, we're under the understanding that right now, Two environmental firms are scheduled to provide presentations to the executive committee sometime, I think, next week, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and Fire Safe Marin is actually providing its first workshop. I believe it may be as early as tomorrow. So um, they've signed one of the two contracts they required uh, to launch the chippers, and I think they're on the, on the verge of signing that second contract. I don't have an exact date. So that being said, a lot of, a, of, of effort underway already. Um, planned effort to ensure that we had trained staff, that we have the resource capabilities and access to the vendors and the others that will help actually launch our efforts in the um, Marinwood and San Rafael areas this season in particular, given we had access to the funding and we also had a, a definite need identified based on our experiences last year um, to ensure that we're, we're putting a program out that makes sense and it's actually providing added value this year in particular from our initial launch of 2020. Drought, uh, <laughs> self-explanatory to some degree. Uh, even though CAL FIRE did not share its firefighting strategies and what it intends to do when it comes to water conservation, 
I have to assume that as big one of the bigger users of water in the um, in the state during this time of year that they're probably communicating and training with their crews right now on how best to utilize that precious resource and also probably more expansion of the use of hand tools, fire retardants, and other things that um, will supplement or complement and offset the use of water when you know water is a, a scarce resource as it is right now. So we're still looking for additional information. I'm going to make sure that you know in our future conversations with the other chiefs that we reach out to Cal Fire and get some of their best practices. Um, right now, we're already using water conservation efforts in uh, the Marin Woods, San Rafael, Novato, and other parts of the county. We just had an engineer's exam, as an example, in San Rafael, where we were training at Novato Station 62 and using a pump that is designed to actually recapture and recirculate the water with very little um, loss of water while those engineers and or crews are advancing lines and doing pumping evolutions so that it's a responsible and a um, very minimally wasteful um, process. And so with that, I was encouraged to see that, you know, it's something that I think a lot of agencies should have, actually have access to, uh, especially given the dynamics we're facing this year. So um, our training, you know, we're looking at um, in San Rafael and other agencies, uh, I think Central Marin, for example, is going to try to partner and send one of their recruits to um, our next recruit academy. And with that, you know, you're normally flowing water. You want to train members on how to use the streams and how to use straight streams, fog patterns, and other um, uh, things regarding the, the master stream on a truck, as an example, or a... a, a um, uh, I'm trying to struggle to think of the name of the appliance right now, but it's, it's also known as a deck gun. And for whatever reason, it's escaping me. But all that to say, these, these appliances use massive amounts of water. You don't want to, to train or not be able to train individuals in a way that you need to, but you want to be able to give them as much realistic um, training and hands-on training that they need to be effective firefighters in the recruit academy and then into probation. So still devising some more creative solutions on, how to effectively flow water, but still not lose water needlessly or be wasteful. Um, one of the things I've seen done in other jurisdictions, which I'm going to speak to our staff about here in Marinwood, as well as in San Rafael, is the use of a hard suction hose where you can draft from a static source and actually pull that water from the estuary or from a lake and then actually flow it back out to the source that you drew it from. So there's some other things that we can employ that, that will still be a responsible thing, but it it also could require that we have to flush the pump as a result when you're using salt water and other things that those pumps aren't normally designed to utilize. And so while that's a, a um, little bit more work, I think it's the work that's you know necessary to help people continue to do the job that we have to do. And you know water is a fundamental part of what we do. So moving on, uh, vegetation management. You know, last year this time we had six inspectors. And then we ultimately ended up with closer to three who were responsible for conducting the temporary seasonal inspection program. Uh, I'm happy to state that this year between our vegetation management staff and our seasonal inspectors, we're upwards of 16 right now. We lost one this past Friday who just didn't appear to be a good fit and he wasn't assigned to, Mar to Marinwood. Uh, he was actually assigned to do some work in San Rafael, but uh, between, let's just say he wasn't a good fit. I'll leave it at that simply. And so, uh, we parted ways with him. So we're down to roughly six vegetation management specialists and um, 10 uh, new hired defensible space inspectors. And there's one individual that will be assigned specifically to Marin Wood so that he can become very knowledgeable and a subject matter expert, if you will, in all things Marin Wood. And that'll be our seasoned vegetation management uh, specialist, Josiah Gorey. And so Josiah has received commendations from some of the community members that he's already interacted with both in San Rafael and Marin Wood. And so we're excited for him and, and, and thrilled that he brings the conscious and focused work ethic that he does. And so I'm, I'm familiar with his uncle actually from a, a former uh, agency and his uncle's now retired, but had the same kind of work ethic and just really connected well with the community. And so he's like a chip off the uncle block there. So just wanted to share that. Um, and as I stated, uh, there will be some inspections beginning here in Marinwood in the next couple of weeks. COVID and vaccinations. Wow, isn't this something that's really 
um, still a dynamic and um, important aspect of how we're living and the things that we're doing right now. Um, I did not get on the call that may have been held earlier today with um, our Office of Emergency Services staff, but I'm understanding that as early as today or tomorrow, there's a strong possibility that Marin, the county is actually gonna be moving to the yellow tier. And if that still holds true, that's gonna be huge news for us because it now starts to open up even more in the way of capacity for the different um, occupancies and businesses to allow uh, an increase in a, a ability to move closer to what has been considered normal or pre-pandemic. And so with that, um, there's also been some anticipated changes that are coming as well. Um, the Center for Disease Control, along with uh, Governor Gavin Newsom and his team have indicated that folks who've been vaccinated, um, they're not necessarily gonna be requiring them to wear a mask when they're outdoors, unless they're in close proximity to others or in they're in a situation where they're gathering with large groups of individuals. And I'm not sure quite how they're defining large right now, but the idea is they feel that Individuals who've been vaccinated are protected and are safe. However, when they go indoors, they're gonna still require and, and mandate that individuals uh, wear their mask. And so that's vaccinated or not. Um, and given what we're seeing right now um, in India and other places where uh, a resurgence is occurring, um, it's kind of troubling to understand that we're, we, we've got a segment of society right now that doesn't seem so inclined to actually go and receive vaccination uh, because they, I guess, perceive normalcy is returning and or don't see the importance of obtaining the vaccination themselves. And so it often makes me wonder, is it because they don't know anyone who's been affected directly um, by the actual uh, uh, virus? And so with that, when you, when you don't know of anyone or haven't heard of anyone or, or can't put a name or a face to something like this, it almost seems abstract or maybe not even believable. Um, but it's, it's unfortunate short-sightedness that could ultimately lead to, lead to more individuals being hospitalized and or perishing. And so we just, we're hopeful that the mutations and the variants that, that are already surfacing and proving to be a challenge don't become pervasive because the majority of individuals who've been vaccinated are the ones that are already gonna be vaccinated. And that's roughly from what I understand, maybe not even half the country just yet. So I'm really curious as to how society is gonna address this and how our leadership is gonna address this. I understand there are a couple of things right now that could curtail or at least compel individuals to, um, to go become vaccinated. And one of them is, if you're a student, you may not be allowed on campus and back in the classroom if you haven't been vaccinated. And that may also tr prove true for some employers who are you know, finding themselves in a strict situation where legally there's two ways to actually not be uh, forced a vaccination on someone. One is if a um, employee states that they have a medical reason to, to um, disagree with the vaccination or a religious, a religious rather opposition to the vaccination. And so with that, employers are required to accommodate um, to whatever degree they're able to individuals with those two dispositions or those two um, rationales for not wanting to be vaccinated. But again, uh, this is something that's going to bear out over time as we as we continue to watch what looks like society moving back to pre-pandemic norms. Um, it's going to be curious to see how things unfold, but I'm speculating. I don't want to do much of that. Um, I do want to say, though, that um, Marin County has done an excellent job of providing vaccinations, so much so that now the Marin Civic Center, from what I understand, as of last Saturday, offered its um, and also the location on Kerner Boulevard in San Rafael have offered their final first round vaccinations. And they will continue to provide the second round vaccinations well into the end of this month. Um, it may go beyond that as well, because I'm learning even as of earlier today, there is a uh, movement afoot to look at potentially as early as next week, the Pfizer vaccine may be approved to actually provide to 12 to 15 year olds. Uh, if that's the case, there's going to be roughly about 14 or 15,000 kids who are in Marin County that may be eligible to, to take the vaccine uh, in a relatively short period of time and in anticipation of summer activities as well as the fall school year. So these are things that are actually um, uh, starting to surface pretty quickly. And, you know, I, I'm glad to see it happening now because it, it helps to position and, and hopefully 
bring the return of students back into the classroom with vaccinated teachers and vaccinated students and workers. And so at least that portion of society will be protected and or in a um, safer situation than they were uh, just last month, for example. Excuse me one second, I need to turn on my light. My lighting is finally dimming in here and I can't see what I've written. Excuse me. All right, much better. Uh, I used to be able to see in the dark. Now I can barely see. So <laughs> something about aging. Um, so uh, the Larkspur Ferry Terminal will continue to operate, uh, but it's important that people realize that they need an appointment to be able to um, get an appointment or get the vaccination there. They will not accept any drop-ins, and I don't know if that intends to change. So we'll see. Uh, another thing that's been reported is that the vaccine supply uh, just contrary to what we reported a couple of months ago, is now outpaced the demand in Marin County. And uh, it, it's gotten to the point where they decided that individuals don't even need identification. And anyone who's age 16 years of age and older may not even necessarily have to work or live in the county to get vaccine from within Marin County. So that's um, just goes to show you that they're looking to ensure that everyone gets to value whatever vaccine supply they have on hand. And that's, that's, that's some news. That's uh, a surprising bit of news. Uh, as of last week, uh, roughly 287,898 doses of vaccine have been administered in Marin County. That's a huge number of vaccinations and or doses. Doses, excuse me. So um, I think that pretty much covers the COVID and the, the vaccination dynamic. Let me uh, just make sure I haven't left anything out. And Oh, mobile pop-up sites. Those will also be at, um, something that becomes more and more um, utilized as opposed to the super site centers, if you will. They're going to make sure that there's mobile vaccination sites. Uh, and those have been actually happening for a little bit for the last couple of months, but look at expand operation to target certain locations where there's fewer or no vaccination op um, opportunities. And with that, um, they're looking at, you know, large events, uh, events where, you know, it could be even a, a movie theater or it could be a, like, I think they had a, a recent um, uh, outdoor opera, if you will. So anything where there's a lot of individuals that may come and attend an event, even socially distanced events, they're going to look to put some of those pop-up clinics there to offer vaccination to those who may have not had the opportunity up to this point. So moving on, um, emergency incidents. Uh, the main one of note is a mutual aid response that our Engine 58 provided to Novato on April 20th. There was a structure fire that um, basically consumed uh, almost two apartments and damaged a few others as well and displaced roughly about a dozen individuals. Thankfully, American Red Cross is always you know, on the spot to provide um, the valuable assistance and transitional assistance, housing, meals, vouchers, um, clothing, and other um, resources that help individuals who've been impacted in this, way, in this manner. Uh, but to show you the, the flexibility and the dynamic of our Marinwood staff, they started out as the rapid inter intervention group when they first showed up on scene. And that's basically a group that shows up outside the, the structure and they're standing by in the event something happens inside that affects the firefighting crews inside or if there's a rescue needed of a civilian that suddenly surfaces. Well, um, to show their dexterity and their ability to actually do multiple things other than just fight fire, um, normally in some agencies you have specialties where individuals will work on a truck or an engine. Our personnel were actually assigned to do truck work on this particular response, and they went to the roof to actually perform ventilation operations and uh, check for extension of fire in the attic. And so it just, you know, it kind of speaks to the, the – their versatility. And so I, I was encouraged to see that because I hadn't really given a lot of thought to our personnel in Marinwood going rooftop and actually doing, you know, vertical ventilation and other roof operations. And so you know, I'm going to follow up with uh, Captain Papa Nicola and discuss, excuse me, how that, how that response actually went and whether or not there's an identification for or a need for additional training moving forward from that incident, given the variety of things that we're responsible for responding to either locally or um, within Marinwood itself. Lucas Valley Road, I thought this was an interesting photo that came out of the hotshot that Chief Senate had put together that 
shows a very tight hairpin curve where um, I guess there's been a lot of a, a long history of vehicle accidents and bicyclists um, going down in this area on Lucas Valley Road, just east of Big Rock. And I've driven this area once before, but I don't recall it exactly. So I want to go back out and take another look at it again. But it turns out they're receiving a over $2 million upgrade. So look for some repairs to actually uh, be implemented on that road, including a retaining wall. So hopefully uh, that'll reduce the number of incidents and or uh, catastrophes that might be faced in that area. The situation with the uh, big rig and the trailer that it was towing uh, looks like could have got to be a very harrowing situation. I'm not quite sure how that ended up the way it did, but he didn't take a wide enough berth clearly. So I don't know if he was operating in low visibility or if he just, in particular, I can see. Um, thousands of gallons of gas into the creek below is not a good thing by any means. Last but not least, our um, response times remain sub six minutes. And that's always encouraging as I've stated before. Um, we're at five minutes and 50 seconds for our average response time on a total of 86 runs for the month of April to date when that report was generated, which was maybe, I think, the 26th or 27th is when I finally got that information. And so, um, again, very good effort on, on the part of our crews to know their district, to get out the door quickly and to get on scene as quickly as they can. So my hat's off to them as they continue to do an excellent job during my first year here in Marinwood and San Rafael. So. That being said, um, that sums up my report. So if there are any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Yeah, this is Ron from CSA 13. Why did uh, the goats do such a lousy job at the county farm? They didn't cut the weeds, chew the weeds down very far. Um, how, how recently were they there? Was it just this past week or two? No. Uh, maybe three weeks ago. Okay. This, this may have been part of the concern that I shared earlier. Well, I can't say because I'm not a specialist when it comes to the goats and their, their diet and what they will and will not always eat. But I've been told recently that um, when the fuels cure as early as they are right now, the goats do not want to eat the ultra dry grass that, and, and shrubbery that we're looking at. And so with that, it could become a problem where you're now going to have to follow up potentially with mechanical means to address or even hand crews to address um, what the goats were not able to or were unwilling to actually um, digest or eat. So that Well, mechanical means are uh, very easy to use there because the terrain is all level. Right. So we'll see next year what happens. Yeah, I... I I'd be speculating again because I didn't see the fuel conditions, um, but that would be my best guess is, is they just found the fuels to not be as tasty or um, for whatever reason, they were too dry. We better get lower class goats. <laughs> Hungry goats. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Hey, uh, Chief, I would also say just to, uh, in brief, uh, Marin did not make the yellow tier. So they are another two weeks out. And at this uh, point, uh, you are not far from uh, Newsom removing all of the tiers uh, if he sticks by what he proposed on d d June 15th. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, delivered to the county supervisors this morning by Dr. Willis. I see. Oh, well, thank you. I, I missed that meeting, so I didn't get a chance to hear anything about the outcome and um you know we were we were very uh optimistic that things were moving in the right direction i guess it was a sudden sudden change in direction over the last few days again huh you're exactly right they okay. had it for one week and couldn't maintain it for the whole second week so now they got to wait two more weeks yeah yeah well we'll see we might be in perpetual you know pending yellow tier for some time to come depending on you know how many more people get vaccinated i think that's really going to to affect how things occur. But um, the great thing is we continue to vaccinate and that's, I wish everybody was looking at it in, in Marin County or looking at it from the lens that Marin County is looking at it at. And we would, we'd have fewer probably potential exposures. So, but we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, we're, we're getting, the, the goal I think was the end of May to actually have all adults fully vaccinated in Marin County. Those who 
had signed up and wanted to be vaccinated, the vaccine would be offered and available to them by the end of this month. So um, let's hope that uh, those numbers get closer to 90%, you know, if nothing else. We, I know you can arrive at 100%, but certainly let's get into the high 90s if at all possible. We got any more comments from the commissioners or questions on the chief's report? No comment. All right, Tom. No Pascal. comment. Okay. No Any comment. Thank you. It was a great report, and it's fantastic to see everything Marion is doing, and of course the Sarnfeld and Marion with. Thank you. Yeah, very good report. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Absolutely. Any public comment on this? There's no public comment. All righty. Very good. Let's move on to item number six. Commissioner's request for future, uh, future agenda items. Commissioners, any uh, future agenda items that you would like to bring up at this time? No. Ron, Tom, no. no. Tom, no. Pascal? Pascal, no. All right. I don't have anything particular either. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll keep you guys informed all the same. All right. Thank well, you. I guess by new you that what you guys provide is fantastic, and I'm fully satisfied with this level of communication. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. Thanks. I agree. Yeah. All right. Well, we just blazed through this one, to use a fire term. Um, Ron moves, we adjourn. Tom seconded. Okay. The meeting is adjourned, and thank you, gentlemen, for your time, all your uh, information provided, and we shall see you same same time next next month. Yes. All right. Thank, thank you, Steve. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Good Thanks, night. Tom. All right. Thank you all. Hey, uh, Chief. Yes. When, uh, when and if you decide to drive out in the, out Lucas Valley Road, let me know. I, maybe I'll tag along with you. I'll treat you to lunch at the end of the road at Nicasio Reservoir. Right oh, man. Nicasio, that sounds like a, uh, Rancho Nicasio. Sounds like a plan. Let me know what day works best for you, and we'll make it so. Uh, probably next week uh, would be – starting next week will be okay. Uh, Top-notch steak sandwich. Wow. You know what? I got to be honest, though. I've been trying to stay away from red meat because I had my triglycerides were through the roof. So I've been trying to curtail what I've been eating in, in some regards, especially when it comes to sugar. Um, so if they have a chicken alternative or a fish alternative, I'm I'd rather say go we'll get you out. some fish and chips. How about that? There you go. I'll, I'll roll with that. Yeah. Thanks as always, Chief. We'll talk soon. All right. Sounds good. Have a good night. All right. Take care, my friend. All right. Bye-bye.